Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to keep working with complete corporate liquidation. Specifically, we're going to look at a parent subsidiary scenario. This topic is covered in a corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section. As always, please connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist, let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from my channel it means others might benefit so please share the wealth this is my instagram account this is my facebook account and this is my website on my website if you choose to donate and support the channel you can do so or you can get in touch with me so in this section we're going to keep working with the corporate liquidation and in the prior sessions we looked at losses for related parties this allowed losses we looked at losses of built-in losses and both of these rules we call them the anti-stuffing rule in this session we're going to be looking at the subsidiary corporation the subsidiary corporation does not recognize gain or losses on liquidating distribution to its parent company this is when the subsidiary when the parent buys the buys the subsidiary or basically the subsidiary liquidate into the parent in form it, it's a liquidation in substance it's the same it's the same entity basically the two entities merge together so that nothing really happened and in the following session we would look at subsidiary corporation does not recognize loss on liquidating distribution to minority shareholder would look at this separately so let's go ahead and start to look at liquidation between a parent and subsidiary what is the general rule the parent does not recognize gain or loss on the liquidation simply put in substance nothing really happened all what we did is we took one one corporation and merged it into another one so in, in substance there is really no change okay also the subsidiary recognized no gain or losses um, on the distribution to its parent as long as we have certain qualification the parent must own at least 80 percent of the voting stock and the value of the subsidiary stock so the parent has to own 80 percent of the voting Subsidiary must distribute all property in complete cancellation of its stock within the taxable year or within three years from the close year in which first distribution occurs. So you have three years to complete the distribution. And very important, the subsidiary must be solvent. In other words, they have more assets than liabilities. Now, if, they, if, they are not, if they are not solvent, if they are unsolvent, the parent will have to recognize a loss because they are taken on a loss. If these requirements are met, requirement one, two, and three, well, non-recognition is mandatory. They cannot recognize a gain or a loss. Now, if the subsidiary is unsolvent, the parent would recognize ordinary loss. We don't have to worry about this. Now, what is the basis uh, to, the, to the parent company? Well, the basis is the same. The property received by the parent and the complete liquidation of the subsidiary has the same basis as in the hands of the subsidiary unless we elect to, to choose Section 338, which I may or may not cover Section 338. Generally speaking, the same basis. I mean, hopefully this makes sense to you because if it's the same company, nothing should nothing should change. All be, basically, what we're doing is we're going from one company and basically like changing the name. Think of it of changing the name of the company, although we're not really changing the name, but think of a merger as the company used to be called A, now it's called B, but it's the same company. All what it did is we merged it into the parent company. Let's look at an example to illustrate this concept. Goose Corporation has a basis of 2.4 million in the stock of Swift Corporation, a wholly owned subsidiary acquired 30 years ago. So 30 years ago, Goose paid 2.4 million, that's their basis, and they bought Swift Corporation. Goose liquidates Swift Corporation and receive the assets that are worth 2 million, have a basis of 1.7. So what happened is they decided to liquidate the uh, the Swift. So just kind of show, this is this is this is the parent, G is the parent and Swift is the subsidiary. So this is the subsidiary and this is the parent. So they invest oops, they invested 2.4 million to buy the company. 20 years ago and now they're kind of basically getting rid of this company so getting rid of this company means what it means all the assets okay in this company will transfer to this now the assets are worth 2 million so so Swift company if we look at their assets we look at book value fair market value if you look at their book value their book value 1.7 their fair market value is 2 now when we transfer the assets from Swift to goose what are we going to transferring? What did we say? We say we're going to be using the basis. The, the, the basis will carry. The basis will carry. Therefore, it's going to be 1.7. 
Okay, let's look at the question first. Determine Goose Corporation recognized gain or loss on the liquidation. But hold on a second. Do we have any recognized gain or recognized loss? And the answer is no. Okay, why? Because because this is a parent a subsidiary parent subsidiary liquidation. You don't recognize a gain or a loss. And we're assuming that Swift is solvent. And we're assuming we own actually 100%. So we meet all the requirements. Determine Goose Corporation basis and the asset received. So when the asset goes from Swift to Goose, when this when those assets goes from from Swift to Goose, how do we report them? Well, we report them at carryover basis. That means we report them at 1.7. We report them at 1.7 million. Okay, and basically this company is gone. Okay, we liquidate it. So that's the question. No, no recognized gain, no recognized loss, and the carry and the basis will carry from Swift to Goose at carryover basis. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. In the next session, I would look at distribution to minority shareholders. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.